Hey guys, welcome back to Philly Sports with Giovanni. Today we have on Chris Long. What's up, man? <laughs> Yo, dude, what's the word? Hey, I love the hat. Go Phillies. We were just talking about it off air. Yep. Uh, you got the Josh Allen jersey, which I said was really good because you're not, you don't have to worry about any rivalries there. And <laughs> who doesn't like Josh Allen? Yeah. I don't know. You'd have to be crazy. To know. I think you'd have to be kind of nuts. Um, so I have some questions for you today. Oh, come on. Bring it on, dude. Um, so my first question is, I think everyone's been asking everyone they know this question. What did you think about the Devontae Smith pick? Oh, man. Well, first off, I was very lucky. I got a chance to have him on my podcast recently. Um, and he was just, you know, Gio, you could tell he's a good kid, man. He's just a good guy. He works his butt off. He's going to be a great teammate. All those Alabama guys that come to the league have kind of that it factor, you know, from the, from the neck up. You know, they're, they're, they're very mentally strong players. They're physically tough. They played in the SEC. They played for Nick Saban. So they, they played in the pros before they get to the pros. So they're all well-adjusted when they get to the league. The concern I always have with, Bama players in general is just the beating that they took at Alabama. Uh, but Devonte seems to have done a really good job of, of being physical without getting dinged up a lot. I think with his frame that people made a big deal about this, he's really good at knowing that, how not to get hit hard, playing physical without putting himself in peril at times. And I think he's just flat out durable. I'm not worried about the weight. I think this was the guy they wanted. I think they, they were probably looking corner. And he was there and they had no choice because the other corners were gone. And I'm good with it. Now, what you got to consider, Gio, is you are in direct competition with Jalen Waddell because, you know, from a franchise standpoint, Devontae might not be, but Howie and the franchise are going to be looking hard at what happens in Miami because if Waddell turns out to be the more productive player after what happened last year uh, with the kid up in Minnesota, and I want to give Rager a lot of time, I think he could still be a very good player. It's just one year tough year last year anyways to play receiver for the Eagles um I think they're going to be looking at the uh, the kid that ended up in Miami and saying we have to be better because you could have had that kid if you didn't trade back yeah um I actually had him on my podcast and he is like the nicest person yeah he's a good dude he's a lot of fun yeah he's gonna fit in well I think Philly fans in the little bit that I know from being there two years well, it was the right two years to be there to get to know Philly fans. But yeah. I mean, there, he just seems like a blue collar guy, like their type of guy. And I just think they're going to love him. I don't think there's much going on for him outside of football in a really good way. I think he's just very focused on his craft and I look forward to watching him play. Yeah. And I actually asked him about his size and how he deals with the hate. Um, yeah. People are always hating on him because of his size. And he said that he uses that as fuel to keep going and be better. Motivation's a big thing, man. Like, you know, we're all going 100%, right? Yep. But that 101 or 102%, which you know is not mathematically possible, but for the sake of talking about football and effort, <laughs> let's break the rules. I think that like a hundred percent, you can't go any faster than a hundred percent, but you know, that motivation, that intrinsic motivation or like something that you conjure up to be mad at somebody about like that is what gets you that one Oh one, one Oh two. And he's got all every bit of that one Oh two, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. Um, what was your favorite part about talking to him? You know, it, it help it helps me anytime I can talk to a young player, honestly, like as a podcaster, selfishly, I, I, you know, I'm 36 years old, man. So I'm talking to kids that are 21, 22 years old. Like it's easy for me to interview somebody who's about my age, who I knew playing, who might, I might be boys with or played against them. There's that mutual respect. There's that kind of like, we get each other but this is an entirely different generation of kids. So when you, when you interview a young kid like that straight out of college, that's intimidating for me because I don't know how that's going to work, the age difference and that whole thing. But I thought Devontae was awesome, man. I loved hearing stories about his camps that he had to go to and like kind of the way recruiting has changed to where 
if you're a kid and you want to be seen and you're in a rural area like like he's from in Louisiana, he had to really bust his butt, him and his mentor, to get to as many camps as possible. They were sleeping in cars. Um, you know, some of the times where he wasn't included in a drill, there was a great story he told where he basically – his mentor was was in the coach's ear, like, let him in this drill. He will burn anybody out here on this field. I promise you, let him in. At the end of the drill, they let him in. First route, uh, he just torched one of the best corners at the, at the camp. So that was kind of the the the, the ultra competitive um, setting he came up in. Yeah, um, I, I think that he's going to do good on this team. I hope so, man. Yeah. Um, so now... Now I have a super fun question. Okay. Ryan Kerrigan. Yeah. Signing yeah. with the Eagles. I know. I know. Me and you have talked to him in the past. He's a super nice guy. Mm-hmm. What do you think about this signing? I think it's a good signing, man. Like, again, I'll make no bones about it. I And listen, when we won the Super Bowl, we weren't picked to be doing anything but rebuilding. I don't even think people were thinking of it as a like an intentional rebuild phase. This year, I think about they're evaluating, they're doing a little building, like the expectations are not high, but in an NFL locker room, when, when you see what you have around you, they know stuff we don't know in that locker room. And maybe these guys are thinking like, we can be the type of sneak up on your team that, that we were in 2017. So in that case, um, Ryan Kerrigan can give you a big lift. I mean, he having that that rusher that, you know, people call him a rotational pass rusher or whatever. Like, I don't love that term. I think it's more a guy that um, if he's fresh and that's the whole idea because he's north of 30, he can give you just as good and better than some of the guys on the field because he's got 90 plus career sacks because he has that experience. And because over the last two years, he's been well rested. I think he's going to be fresh. Um, you know, with that influx of young talent in Washington, he kind of got the short end of the stick. And that's the way it goes when you get older in the league. I don't care how many plays you made. Um, so he's in kind of a situation now in Philly where he's going to be hungry to prove himself. He's going to be fresh. He's going to have respect to the guys in the, in the defensive line room. And he can teach. You know, I think even if this team is not a competitive football team, this is an investment in the future of your young players too. Because he's going to cost you $3 million. He's going to teach Josh Sweat things about pass for us that he hasn't heard before because every rusher is different. And because you got Brandon Graham in there who's got a totally unique body type, BG could teach me, you know, like, hey, try this move, try this move. But I can't, I can't, I can't replicate the body type of BG. He's so unique. You know, Fletcher Cox is another one of your leaders. Well, he's a defensive tackle. Derek Barnett, in, in his own right, great young player. Josh Sweat, great young players, but they're young players. So who are they learning from? Well, Ryan Kerrigan can teach them things um, that maybe they're not hearing in their own D-line room. Yeah, yeah. I think that this is a amazing move. Um, and people are comparing this pickup to when we picked you up. <laughs> How does that make you feel? Well, it's a nice compliment to me because I think Ryan Kerrigan was a tremendous and has been a tremendous player. I mean, like he, you know, when I got to the Eagles, uh, I was closing on, you know, I was in the sixties for sacks, but you know, he's in the nineties. And so he's been a guy that, um, has been a pass rusher his whole career. And so I think there is a, definitely a, there's a, there's a common thread here, you know, uh, obviously like when he came out, he was comp to me. Um, you know, at times I think people probably say our games are similar, but we're different. You know, the way we rush was different. Like we had a different, we had different tools in the toolbox, but I think the biggest difference between me and him is that he's an outside backer. He's always been an outside backer, which means that, you know, um, he does more of the rush stuff and I had to play up and down the line a little bit more. So I played some three and some four eye and that sort of thing. And I think that all that having been said, in Philly's scheme, we're the same player at this stage in our career. Like me at 33 when I came to Philly, him at 31 or whatever he is, or I don't know how old he is, uh, when he came to when he's coming to Philly, it's going to be a 4-3. Um, he'll be fine in a three-point stance. He just hasn't done it a ton. Yeah. Um, I, I think, I really think he's going to fit in really good here. I think he's going to fit in well, man. And I think the fans are going to like him. He's going to work his butt off. He always does. He's always really, you can tell that, you know, 
watch a guy celebrate with their teammates, watch a guy out there having fun on the field. Like his teammates really like him. You can tell that they're always all over him when he makes a play. Um, you know, he's going to be a guy that's, that's going to breathe a little life and fresh blood into that D line room. Yeah. Um, what are you most excited for this year when it comes to the wide receiver core? Because now we have Travis Fulgham, mm -hmm. a health, a healthy Jalen Rager, and a Devontae Smith. Yeah. Well, I think I'm really excited for Jalen Rager. I am. I mean, like, I've been there when I started out in the league and I got picked higher than him, you know, in the top five. But my first year, it was fine. but you know, being a high pick, there's a lot of pressure. Now the second year for me got really, really sketchy because, you know, I'm looking up at one point and I, you know, I'm not doing the numbers that I'm supposed to be doing. And, and, you know, people are calling you a bust and that sort of thing. And I know Philly can be hard. Now for me, the next year it started turning around. I go on a four year run where I'm up in the top of the league in sacks over that four year, like, you know, not the best, but up there. And I think Rager could see that type of like aha moment in the next year and a half. And I think that like, it's totally impossible. It's not impossible, but it's really hard for young players to get some traction in a really crappy situation. And last year was very crappy. Um, and it's, it was a tough year to catch footballs for the Eagles. So, you know, when you've got a guy like Fulgham, who's learning his way, you got a guy like Jalen Rager, who's, who's learning his way. Um, and now you have Devante, uh, who's going to be learning his way as well. It just takes the pressure off these young guys to have more of them. You know, it takes the pressure off these young guys and it gives them an, op an opportunity to grow together. And I think one of the biggest beneficiaries will be Jalen Rager, because I thought last year there was a lot of undue pressure on him that, you know, had nothing to do with him or, you know, the work that he put in to get where he got, he's immediately, and this is the way football is, it's fair. He's immediately being, you know, compared to, um, you know, Justin Jefferson, who's got this like incredible first year. His rookie year is like damn near historic. So that's not fair to, to, uh, to Rager. Uh, I just want to see him shine a little bit. You know what I mean? That's the way it goes, though. When I got drafted high, they were going to compare me and Glenn Dorsey, and they were going to compare me and Cliff Averill and Calais Campbell, and we, and then we and, and Cedric Ellis, and then we compete and we we play it out. But I don't think the kid in Minnesota should take anything away from Rager. I think he could have a really nice year this year, and I think the first year was tough. Yeah, which you're you're always going to get compared to someone in this league, which I yeah over the years. Um, and I think that that this year he can rack up a lot of numbers. I think he can too. And you're right. The comparisons are always very valid in this league um, because as fans and as a front office, you're sitting there and saying like, woulda, coulda, shoulda. Like we're watching, we're playing armchair quarterback on the development of a, of a receiver in, in Minnesota. But my point is that as far as Jalen Rager is concerned, he shouldn't be concerned with that. That's not his problem. His problem is just being as productive as he can be in Philly because, like, listen, he's going to have a chance with, uh, with an exciting new offense, a quarterback that people are buzzing about, young receivers around him to kind of take the pressure off him to take a big leap, and I'm excited for that. Yeah. Um, so our defense is looking good this year. Our offense is looking good this year. What is your prediction for our record? Man, it's totally weird now with the, all the games and all that stuff. Uh, I think Vegas thinks it's about it's gonna be you're gonna be like a nine win team. I, I think we're gonna be in that nine ten win team range. I think maybe nine wins sounds about right to me, um, and that would be a real big success. Uh, I'm not handicapping them. I'm not giving them a ceiling. They could bust through that ceiling, but it's my job to make a prediction that that best suits what I think I see and. I see a team that's got some holes and I see a team that, as you said, there's some really positives on both sides of the ball, but everything's going to, going to fall on Jalen's shoulders hurts. Yeah. You know, I'm not saying everything, but like, listen, they're trying to invest in him. They're going to evaluate him this year. Um, I know he's going to be motivated. You could get a special year out of him if some light bulbs turn on for him uh, when it comes to playing quarterback in the league. And, and that's going to be up to this new staff. Can they develop him? Yeah, um, and I actually had Jalen on my podcast a few weeks ago, too. Uh, and 
that guy, man. He he's as cool as a cucumber. <laughs> he is. He's That's a good. There was so much <laughs> swag, and he's like, he's like, yeah, it's easy. Yeah. Like he, I he mean, everything looks so easy. You got to have that, I guess, man, to be somebody who, who's got the ball in their hands. Like any player has to have like a certain level of confidence and there's different ways to be confident, but you got to have something like that. And he has it. Um, he has it in bunches. Yeah. Um, I thought we were supposed to rebuild this year, but some of the picks that we're mm-hmm. making kind of makes me think otherwise. Yeah. Do you think that we're going to, keep trying to rebuild or have a run well i think you can i think you're always building you know like the rebuild thing i mean you're in the situation you're in you're you're building towards the future but they also know that i think like as i said earlier this is a big evaluation year for jalen hurts i mean like make no mistake about it i've said this and you you're a carson fan and and i think carson's gonna do well in indy but i also understood why the move was made totally um but all the people that said, like, I've seen enough Jalen Hurts in four games to make a determination as to what type of player he is. Yeah. The, the Carson Wentz, we saw an entire MVP season and flashes of brilliance, and look what last year turned into. So my point is, like, we need more time. I think the Eagles know they need more time, and I really like what I see from Jalen, but they're going to be using the year to try to win, but at the same time evaluate him. And they might know about halfway through the season – you know, like, are we a team that's trying to make a run? Because a lot of the division games are on the back end, which is nice for the Eagles. I mean, look at this. I was um, I was talking to somebody about this the other day. You could be really struggling three quarters of the way through the season, but if you have all your division games ahead of you, you could still win the thing. And so I think they're going to use the front half of the season to try to evaluate, compete, and see where they are, and then try to make a run if they're in range. Um, you're always trying to win in this league, but it's a tough one to win in if you have certain holes in your roster and they're going to find out how big those holes are early. And I think we'll know more uh, a couple months in. Yeah. Um, so now that you're a Philly fan to end off the podcast, who is your favorite player now? Man, I got, I got to say it's uh McCutcheon. McCutcheon. I love uncle Larry. I like uncle Larry, man. I, I, uh, I just always liked him when uh was he in pittsburgh um and he seemed like a really good dude like uh like he's he's confident but not arrogant and he's a locker room guy and he's a great player and he's tough i mean he just seems like a nice fit in philly i I really like him and when i spent my time in philly i was a vet and so i kind of look at the vet and i say that's the guy i'm i'm drawn to to watch him play yeah, I, I love watching him play, and, and it's funny because my mom, she'll be sitting there, and she'll she'll call it, like, like the the Larry smirk or something. <laughs> He's, like, up batting, and he'll be, like, he'll have, like, the, like, a smirk, almost like how Darius Slay has his own, like, <laughs> and then, and so my mom will be, like, hey, there's Uncle Larry smirk. That Uncle Larry smirk. There we go. That is, you've been watching a lot of baseball. That means if it starts rubbing off on you, who's your favorite player on the Phillies? Uh, I like Reese. I like Brett. Yeah. Uh, I like I like Alec Baum. Okay, that's 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 a good answer. I, I like Reese, and I didn't know anything about him before. Uh, I well, I didn't know anything about most players before I really started tuning in. But he's a pretty good player. I didn't even know that. Yeah. So it's fun. I can't wait to get up to a game, man. When I get up there, if I go to a game, I'm going to let you know, and we got to meet up down at the park or something. Yeah. I'm That'd be to- tight. That'd be cool. You got you to gotta teach me how to, like, uh, go to a Phillies game because I've never been. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going tomorrow. <laughs> You're practicing already. Yeah. All right. There we go. <laughs> Who are they playing tomorrow? You know more than me. The Marlins. Oh, we're going to beat the Marlins. Yeah. Yeah. We beat them last night, eight to three. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna beat them like twelve to four tomorrow. Yeah, easy sweep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Get the broom out. <laughs> yeah, get the broom out. All right. Thank you for coming on, Chris. And I, I always love having you on. Geo, anytime, man. It's so great to see you. It's good catching up with a buddy. Thank you. Go okay. Back. Talk to you soon.